Okay, this job, uh, what I'm doing is replacing a shower pan, or replacing fiberglass shower pan with a real one. And even though this is a real one, uh, these fiberglass pans um, aren't always the best thing, although builder's grade type of material is usually what's used. Um, I think they did an upgrade when they built this because they used travertine. This is an elongated travertine tile that's on here. There's nothing wrong with the tile, nothing wrong with the grout or anything. In fact, there's nothing wrong with the backer board necessarily. This is um, Hardy Backer, I believe. Hardy Backer could be Fiber Rock. I think it's Fiber Rock. Yeah. Anyway, the reason that's all come off is because uh, the customer already started taking, pulling the tile off, and of course the mastic came off along with uh, with um, the Fiber Rock board. But the biggest issue that's happened here is the leakage so there's been a lot of leakage coming out of the side of here and one of the reasons um, well the main reason is when the shower doors which are not here anymore the shower doors are sitting over there they're not put in well enough they're not caulked on the side and a lot of attention to the detail of making sure they're not waterproof um, is the biggest problem so what happens with these is the water will leak up under this rail, this bottom rail that was glued down here, water will leak up under there. Um, water will manage to find its way up and over. I don't know how, but somehow it managed to find its way. Um, these little lips, you have a lip on most of these prefab shower pans as well as bathtubs. So these lips are there for a reason. Your backer board sits on top of the lip and then your tile overlaps it. And the reason for that is that you don't soak up water into your board. So oftentimes I see where builders will actually put sheetrock or whatever backer board they use um, over the lip and right down here. And then the tile goes up against that. So inevitably what happens is that water um, transfers through, gets sucked up the bottom of these boards and causes mold and mildew issues and so they actually did this in the exact right way they should do it putting the board on top of the lip is the correct way but regardless um, there was still water coming over and ruining this part of the knee wall so anyway um, we be taking out this pan and unfortunately I can't really show how to do it because um, I don't have a second set of hands to videotape but basically um, this pan comes out after all this board is taken out. So what I'm going to do is cut out uh, very carefully. There's plumbing in back of this wall. So I'll set my saw to about half an inch or so and cut out all this board from all of the corners to corner, including this tile here. Pull out this board. That'll free up the sides of the pan. The rest of it is just anchored by virtue of this drain. So I'll have to get a circular saw in here and I usually cut out like a square around it and that frees it up. Once that's done, then I can go ahead and cut off the old drain and go from there. So that's what I will show next. Okay, it is now 20 minutes later, maybe 30 at the most. I have this pan out of here and have gotten down to the drain area. I also cut out all this excess tile and what I thought was party backer, which I kind of had a, you're always kind of guessing on this material because one duplicates the other party backer um, it was 90% Portland cement, so you usually don't have these layers showing like this with Hardy Backer. It's usually a pretty solid piece. So my thought is now that these have fallen off in layers, that this is a USG building product called um, fiberboard. So it kind of looks like fiberboard, but regardless, it doesn't really matter whether Hardy Backer or fiberboard doesn't really matter. Um, the process is still the same taking it out and the process would be the same waterproofing it so it doesn't really matter what your backer board is the fact that they didn't waterproof it is pretty typical builders aren't going to take the time to waterproof anything but it does definitely help although it really didn't have any damage with that uh, another thing too this was not fiberglass which i thought it was a fiberglass pan it's not it's what's called cultured marble so it's not real marble it's um, made up marble and 
the great thing about this is it's much easier to take up than fiberglass. Uh, I don't say much easier, but the process of trying to pull it out and manipulate it out of this square when the thing is almost exactly square also. Sometimes it's not just a square cut that you do around the drain to get that loose, but it's also you've got to get a sawzall or a cane saw if you will, and you have to cut it in half in order for that to come out. With cultured marble, all you do is beat it with a hammer and it falls apart like you would think marble does. So it's relatively easy to get out. All these side pieces got knocked out except for this one, so I'll take that downstairs as one whole piece. And then the whole bottom part is one whole piece too that weighs probably a good part of 65, 70 pounds. Um, but it's gone. So the next step in doing this will be to cut out uh, a larger square to figure out where this drain is going. Somewhere there's going to be a key trap. I'm imagining, because the tub and the vanity is over in that direction, that the drain is going that way and the P trap will be here. Depending on what I see when I look inside of that, I'll probably change out the P trap where it starts to bend down and curve back up. Um, if I can, if I can't, then I will deal with the same two inch pipe that this should be, go down a little bit further below grade and just cut that off put an extension piece of pipe, two inch pipe in, and then I have my new drain and drain assembly to put on there. So that will eventually go right there. And then I'll be ready to start doing the preliminary of putting in my scab pieces along here, build up my curve here, and put my shower pan liner in. And the um, process is relatively simple. So I will be back when I get to the next step. Okay, it's about another 30 minutes later and so far all I've done is I've cut out a larger square, got rid of that piece of wood, um, cut off the old drain, which I have thrown away already, and gone below, a little bit below where the drain was, probably about 4 inches or so, um, and I'm not going to change out the P-trap because I'm not seeing any clogs or anything up inside of the P-trap, nor am I seeing any debris stuck on the side of the pipe, which I see a lot of times from the new construction that was done whenever it was done. So, um, in the meantime, all I've done is I've scabbed out these um, pieces of 2x4 in order to have something for my next piece of plywood to rest upon, which I've already pre-cut. So that will fit nicely inside of there. And then I've also marked exactly where my drain is going to go because I know exactly from the side here, that's 4 inches, center and then from this point here to six inch in the center so I have six marked and four marked and then I have one of these little things you remember from grade school or maybe not that just sits right on there in the center and you just mark it out five and a half inches and the reason I got five and a half inches is because the edge of my drain which is where the taper is going to be is five and a half inches around so I will screw this down into place I will drill out a couple holes along here and then I will get my uh, saws off, my reciprocating saw and I'll put the blade inside of the holes and I'll cut around and I'll do the cut on a taper so that I'll match up with the taper on the edge of the spring. And that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, it's now about an hour later. As you can see, I've already set the curb, those three pieces of uh, 2 by 4 end to end. And I've also done the scabbing on the outside. Um, I always scab in these 2 by 6 So the shower pan liner has something to rest up against. Um, it's not everybody that does this. I started doing it many, many years ago. There are certain times where the pipes um, that, that come up to feed the shower fixture um, get in the way. So in this case, I just used my last little scrap piece of 2 by 6 and toenail it in the best I could to go around the pipes. Normally what I'll do, I'll have my uh, chop saw and I'll, I'll cut out, in other words, I'll have one long piece going across and I'll mark where my pipes are at and then I'll cut out with my chop saw, mm, I guess for lack of a better term, chisel out um, a section of the 2x6 so that it can fit flush up against the pipe and have one contiguous piece. However, in this case, I only have about, I think maybe even half an inch. So half an inch to the edge of there won't work. I can't, I can't chisel out that thin of a piece of wood. So instead, I just went ahead and scabbed in that piece there. 
But anyway, I always do that just for the pan liner, as I said. Um, has something to rest up against. Um, as I showed you already, this piece has already been uh, put in, screwed down. I drilled the holes. I did my little bevel cut or, or along the edge here. And that will work out with my drain. Because the drain needs to fit flush on the floor, which it does right now. Um, the drain edge has a taper, as I said already. And my cut has a taper. So these were my drill holes that I used to get my blade inside. And then I just did a little sideways cut in order to get that taper. Um, so we're directly on center. I already cut my little pieces. I have a connector piece, a two inch connector that will go down on there first on that pipe. And then this will go on here. And then this will go on here. And then this is my final piece that's gonna go in there. Now, I'm a little bit high, as you can tell. Not figuratively speaking, not literally. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chop off, I'm going to find out exactly how much more discrepancy it looks like, about an inch or so. So I'm going to take this back out. It always helps to dry fit. As they say, measure twice, cut once. And so I'm going to cut off probably about an inch of this so that it fits nice and flush. And then I will glue it in. These flanges have, the bottom flange anyway, has four tapered, in other words, recessed screw holes so I'll put some uh, inch and a quarter drywall screws right into the four of those as soon as I glue it down and it will be anchored to the floor just like that when I come back and then I'll be ready to set my pan liner and my pan liner has set out in the sun to get flexible because it is rubber I want it to be as flexible as possible so when I do all the folds in the corner and everything and then I'll wrap it around it here and I'll screw it up top, and then I'll be ready to pour my pan, which I already have my my um, pan that I'm going to mix it in right there. And I already have my mortar mix, so I'm ready to go as well as my water. And um, I'm going to get to uh, setting this drain so I can get busy on pouring the pan. Okay, my drain has been glued, and I've done the four screws and those things I was just telling you about. Um, the next thing to do is make sure you're level. It's hard to show on this angle. So, I have a level bubble just off a tad in that direction. And then this direction. Can't see it. Can't even see it from the top. Um, this direction, <coughs> it's perfect. So, that's close enough for purposes of me pouring the pan. And, um, now this part comes out. This is the drain cap and barrel. And then I have, um, if I can find it, I have an open end wrench that fits perfect for my bolts. There it is. So, take these bolts out. Don't lose them inside the drain. If you lose one inside of the drain, you're going to need one of those telescoping magnets to retrieve that bolt. So then my secondary flange comes off and that's what it should look like when you're getting ready to put your liner down, which is what I'm getting ready to do. So um, this will all go back once the liner is in place for the time being. I'm not going to worry about those and I'm going to get my liner in. Okay, now it's about 15 minutes later and I have put my liner in. Um, the liner sometimes can be tricky. Uh, these liners come in, well, Home Depot sells them in four and five foot lengths, and then, um, or widths rather, and then the length you can get as much as you want. Um, five foot is preferable. This has, I think this has a five foot 
this direction, but the forefoot, or I'm sorry, mm, I forget the measurements. Anyway, the point is that Home Depot doesn't have a six foot roll. You have to usually get that from a tile store if you can find it at all. So this is a five foot from left to right. Yeah, that's right. So Home Depot selling this as a five foot, but this is a four foot opening, almost a four foot opening. So what I end up with is six inches of pan liner on that side and six inches on that side, which you kind of want to go above or at least at the edge of where your where your blocking is at. <coughs> Excuse me, at the top of the blocking is seven inches. And so you see there's an inch discrepancy. So that doesn't really matter in the long run, but I would like to see Home Depot sell a six foot width of this stuff so that I can go up past that, you know, a good six inches. But, you know, in the end, it doesn't really matter. Usually when I, when I pour my mortar, I'm only maybe about two inches up anyway. The whole point is when you put your wallboard on after this is all dried, you want your wallboard to overlap as much as possible your pan liner. So, as I said, this will work. I'll get about four inches of overlap, but still you want it as high as possible. I did show the process of how to put the liner in. I have another video where not only do I show the process of putting in the liner, but I show it from very beginning to very end as far as pouring a pan. And so I'm not going to show the process of pouring the pan either because I already have that video and I'm going to link it right up here somewhere at some point so you can watch the whole process of setting a pan from beginning to end in that video. But this one I'm just trying to show you the um, intricacies that you're going to run into when you're just changing out your pan. You're keeping the rest of your shower, but there's an issue with your pan. You think that it's leaked or there's some type of issue with the curb where the curb's leaked or outside of the pan. And so what you have to do is cut out the bottom portion. I've done quite a few of those and I'm, other tilers have done quite a few as well. Also, it does happen infrequently where we cut out the bottom part and only replace the pan and then scab in new tile and new tile on here. And so basically you have the bottom third of your shower that's done, but not the whole shower. So that's the whole purpose of showing me showing this video. And again, that's why I didn't show how to put in the pan liner or the drain or all that stuff, but I showed as much as I can. So the next process, and of course the level is on there, make sure my drain is level. So the next process, I have this mortar I showed earlier. A couple bags I'm gonna mix up, toss it in there, you know, travel it out the best I can, and get it down to the point where it's sloped down to the drain. If I need another bag or two, I'll mix that up. Usually this is gonna be about three bags, maybe going into four, relatively small shower. And so I always have an extra bag just in case. And then all the sloping process um, will be finished um, probably about 30, about 30 minutes um, for me to do that. And then I'll put a fan on it, let it set overnight until it's dry. And then the process will continue tomorrow with the wallboard and the red guard and the tile and be wrapping things up. So basically I just showed how to take out a pan and put a new pan in in I think the times that I showed the video that I was gone hour, two hours, three hours, in less than three hours. Eh, call it four. So in less than four hours, take out a pan, put a new one in. Um, that's as easy as it gets. So, I don't know, um, I don't know if it's easy for me anyway, but I'm, I'm just trying to show the process so that you're kind of aware if you think you have a leaky pan or you have issues with regard to your pan, this is a process you're gonna have to go through. And by the way, this is, this is not a day process, even though this took relatively small amount of time, four hours, this still has to dry overnight. And then once that dries, I'll come back tomorrow, put the wall board up and I'll mud all the gaps and all that stuff and red guard it. And I'll put a second coat on, of red guard on, um, in addition to putting a little red guard on the pan itself. That has to dry overnight because it has to cure. Uh, the next day I'll be setting the floor tile. That has to dry overnight before I can grout it. The next day, I'll grout the floor tile and set up the wall tile. And then of course that has to dry before I can grout that. So regardless, it's a five day process. If anybody tries to speed it into a two or three day process, uh -uh, don't do it. This is definitely at least four days, if not five day process, just to do a pan. So there you go. Okay, so since I was last on camera, I went ahead and poured the pan. It has dried overnight and then uh, today I went ahead and put a hardy board on all three walls and I wrapped the curb with hardy board 
and then I'd always butter my curb with my thin set. So I buttered the curb and I buttered out from the perimeter and then of course all my screw heads and then right where the old board meets the new board um, put some thin set in there too and I put a coat of red guard on so I'm going to put a second coat on let all that dry overnight let it cure and then tomorrow I'll do the floor tile so I didn't show the process of pouring the floor and the rest of it with the board and all that stuff because I have another video which I've already alluded to and I put a link right there for all of you that want to know how that process is done I don't want to bore everybody but I'm just showing how easy this is um, total time I think yesterday was three hours maybe three and a half hours and then today total time was about another two hours um, a lot of drying time but still about two hours of work so about five hours into it and the pan is done and now the tiling starts.